colonialists, this un oh, okay. uninhabited country, or by the exercise of legislative power by the sovereign over a conquered or ceded country, and whereas Marbar number two judgment concluded that the legal fiction that this country was desert, uncultivated land belonging to no one, terra nullis, was a lie. The High Court ruled this is a racist notion and cannot remain in Australia's legal system. This now raised the obvious question that no one in the African affairs in this country dares to raise. What is the true legal statute of Australia as a nation and what is the statute of the Aboriginal nation and people? Why? Because many of the pretended Aboriginal leaders, leadership have been paid a great amount of money to tell the political and legal line. This also includes the academics who refuse to discuss the real issues, arguing that the issues of faith and company this provides the vehicle for a legal eagle and the politicians to hide and shield themselves from the issues that we must must be dealt with. And whereas Australia was built on the foundation of a legal fiction, terra nullum, resulting in captive Aboriginal nations and people shattered sovereignties, the conquest of which invaded at the expense of Aboriginal people in our country. At the same time, Aboriginal religions and economic rights. This resulted in the establishment of frameworks from all dispersed with discriminatory legal regimes that resulted in the rule of apartheid. Those segregating Aboriginal people from the white society, at the same time the killing of Aboriginal people was legalised. In particular, those who asserted sovereign rights and who choose to defend their rights to retain ownership over country and territory. And Whereas the apartheid regime was later legalised through respective states and territory legislation, which marginalised disfranchised Aboriginal people. We have been, and, and people to our great mental suffering and torture. The government mission stations and church control mission deprived our nation's identity, ended our economic independence, and destroyed our religions, beautiful, and connections. And, Where is our people? Whereas our people were denied freedom of movement and association, denied the right to live on our ancient lands, observing our laws, culture, customs, our religion and spirituality in accordance with the creation. And whereas African peoples continue to be dis proportionally disproportionately incarcerated and are being killed in custody, abused in our youth detention centres, which ultimately results in the highest youth suicide in the world. And whereas, and whereas in the political and legal arenas, these policies and practices continue to this day, thereby intensifying the gross Violations of our basic, yeah. basic yes. human rights. While, yeah. sorry, when While we finish here. Yeah. Abrogating. Yeah, we're abrogating. Abrogating the rule of law and criminalising Aboriginality and otherness, and whereas we insert that we remain independent, sovereign Aboriginal nations and people. We yeah. assert that we have never ceded nor relinquished our sovereignty under any terms or conditions to the occupying colonising power. Whereas the Australian continues to this day to comply illegally, our people have acceded to extinguishment of our inherited sovereign rights through the native title process under Indigenous Land Agreement, ILUA regime. And whereas the legal view of wars of national liberation is the consti constitute a category of internal wars and as such have not been subjected to international law legal re regulations from the early 1960s. However, in a number of international legal fora, but 
more significantly, the United Nations General Assembly, um, a growing majority of people support the view that struggles against colonialism and other forms of oppression in pursuance of the legal right of self-determination has an international character. And where, as the point of departure for most ex, ex, ex colonial, colonial, yeah, ex colonial states in the United Nations was recognition for the principle imposed an obligation on the colonialising power to establish the right of all peoples to the exercise of self determination. This trend culminated. culminated in the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 1514 of 1960, containing the Declaration on the grant, Granting of the Independence of Colonial Countries and People. Unfortunately, there were no provisions or carvets for recognition or preservation of the rights of the First Nations people. This was, however, a minor consolation made with the United Nations, including the declarations on the principles of international law concerning friendly relations, which was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly Resolution number 2625 in 1970. And whereas this declaration was adopted in the United Nations General Assembly by a acclamation. acclamation, that is unanimous, with a dissenting, without a dissenting vote, it gave the universal recognition to the legal and binding nature of the principle of self-determination. In the view of these developments, wars and national liberation can no longer be considered as internal wars, since they are now regulated by international law. As concerns the legality of the use of force in the context of self-determination, the Declaration provides that every state has the duty to refrain from any forcible action which deprives peoples of their self-right to, 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 yeah, right to self-determination, freedom and independence. In their actions against resistance, the exercise of their right to self-determination such people are entitled to seek and receive and support in accordance with the purpose and the principle of the character. The Charter. African National Congress, ANC, submission to the South African Truth and Reconciliation Council in 1997. And whereas governments in Australia have known the atrocities being perpetrated against Aboriginal people, a factor acknowledged in New South Wales Legislative Assembly by Mr Gould. A member of the Legislative Assembly, when he said on 9th of June 1886, in a way in which the Aborigines have been treated by the governments of the different Australian colonials, was a standing disgrace to our civilisation. And at their grace it was. Shame. Whereas the Christian missionary operations were an evil that was not originally recognised until now. In C.D. Rowley's The Destruction of Aboriginal Society, 1978, Chapter 7, the Mission, uh, Christian Missions and Justice, Rowley stated at page 158, In most British colonials, the Christian missions was a partner of the government and business interests. Colonial domination served the joint interests of the government and gained God end. Your turn. Here. This young fellow is going to read the last one. <laughs> 